Schubert, thank you so much uh, for joining us. We're really happy Thanks to have you me. on Hey China. Now, uh, trip.com uh, is China's largest online travel agency and, of course, one of the world's biggest as well. Now, with uh, the global pandemic, how have your operations been impacted and what is your business outlook for this year? Yeah, uh, that's, that's definitely a big question. Uh, as you can see, everybody around the world has been impacted, especially in the March, April timeframe. Right. Um, it, it's not exaggerating to see that we're pretty much down to zero at, at some of the days, uh, but we're seeing a, a uptrend. I think that's, that's the promising part of it. Uh, starting in late April, early May, we starting to see domestic travels to come up, uh, especially in some of the countries where um, the control has been done in a proper way. So you can see, for example, Korea, uh, China, obviously, uh, Taiwan, uh, a few other locations that are actually getting some uh, vibrant recovery, especially some of the domestic travel has gone back to, yes, uh, last year's level, so 2019 level, which is really good. Um, Party is because people can't get out of the country anymore, so they want to kind of find a place to go. So we're seeing that uh, happening. Uh, so... Operational-wise, we, we definitely have to kind of uh, scale down on the operation. Uh, frankly, we have a lot of customer support uh, staff uh, that we have to kind of do some adjustment on, on their schedule uh, to just to make sure that we can make it a sustaining for business. So, uh, but looking forward, I think we're, we're seeing signs of recovery, especially in, in China, as you know, we're now getting uh, about 50%, right? It changes day, day by day. And some days are better than others. Um, there are also cases of outbreaks, like for example, in Beijing. So we, we're actually adjusting as we go, but we're definitely about 50%, you know, uh, which, is, which is great. Uh, and we want to look ahead by looking at quarter by quarter. I think that is actually, Probably promising to see that in Q3, we should be getting to a very healthy level in the domestic area. Hopefully, we actually start to see travel bubbles. Yeah, the, the concepts being talked about a lot, I have yet to see a real bubble. Uh, there are business travel between, say, Korea and China, that's happening. There's also talks about Singapore going to different places. Vietnam is now open with their border to many locations, I think July 1st. I don't remember the exact date. So we are seeing that actually happening. Obviously the big talk between Australia and New Zealand about their travel bubble, which is also gonna be something that we look forward to. Uh, all in all, I think we look at the world by big regions. So we see APAC, Asia Pacific, as one that recovers the earliest. Uh, as you can see, the control and the, the treatment and everything are done in a more proper fashion. So we actually see lower death rate, uh, lower infection rate, lower new cases. So that's actually uh, what we're seeing in, uh, in Pacific. Uh, and then you look over to Europe, which is also opening up. France opened up last week, I believe. Uh, Spain is doing that this week. UK is doing something as well. So we're seeing that actually starting to recover. I was talking to a friend um, in Denmark this morning, and they're actually looking at policy changes as well. So we're seeing that it's going to open up next. Uh, America's a little bit more challenging in their situation. So um, we just have to wait in that area. So all in all, I think we hopefully we'll get back to say 50% range uh, by end of the year. Uh, and that's the more domestic level. The international level, we just have to see how the policy changes. Uh, we, we know the tickets shoot off the roof the minute the policies change, right? When we look at France is opening their borders, right? we'll see ticket sales double, right? Over, over a 12 hour period. So people are ready to go the minute doors are open. And that, that's what's really hopeful uh, for, for everyone. And, and it's a big impact for the industry, as you know, not just airlines, but also cruise lines, you know, talk about local travel and, and also hotels. So yeah, we, we just hope that everybody can, can you know, go through the ride together and, and we don't see too many bankruptcies uh, in, in this challenging times. Right, and Shubert, uh, you are the COO of Trip.com, one of the largest uh, travel uh, businesses operating in the world. Uh, at the board level, 
this is obviously an unprecedented event. I mean, no one has predicted that coronavirus is going to hit. So how do you prepare for this uh, sort of uh, unprecedented risks uh, in your operations? And I'm sure this is not the first one, and this is not going to be the last one. Absolutely. Uh, so to be very open about that, uh, one good thing that happened, well, a bad thing that happened earlier was the, the SARS event. So in a way, we, we kind of gone through it. So we, we, we've been through it, we bite the bullet, we have to do some operational adjustments to make things kind of work in a certain way. So we kind of learn our ropes uh, in that process. So when this one hit, it wasn't as painful as the last one. Right? We're, we're actually able to say, oh, okay, we've done that before, operation adjustment, make that happen. Also, I think we thought ahead of time, uh, even last year, we were looking at, hey, maybe the economy is going up in such a long uptrend, they're bound to have some bumps in the, in the process. So we sort of kind of anticipated some of that will happen, which is didn't know it's going to be a ma ma major pandemic. So we, we sort of did a little bit more homework and that actually helped us to kind of adjust accordingly. So I would say all in all, um, we are as surprised as everyone about the pandemic. But in a way, because of our past experience, because of our anticipation, uh, we're able to do more scenario planning. And then through that, then we help us to weather the storm just a bit better than some of our other partners. So you constantly uh, run through uh, business uh, resilience uh, simulations, I guess. and. Um, Talking about the business recovery, particularly in the domestic market, Schubert, uh, you also face a lot of competitions domestically. And now you have, uh, well, Tencent is your partner, but you yeah. have a competition coming from Alibaba, uh, one of the biggest companies in China. And you also face competition from the new uh, gorilla in the room, uh, Mei Tuan, and uh, as well as others, you know, smaller ones like Chunyu, et cetera. How do you remain on the competitive edge in, in this, uh, you know, travel industry? Absolutely. So as you probably heard and, and know that one of the things that we really uh, kind of take home with us is our service. And that's the key element that we believe. It's not just about having an online platform selling a few tickets, right? If that's the case, then many people come in and, and they will be uh, very competitive in that sense. But we have a very good service platform. Right. We have close to 20,000 uh, service employees that actually help our business travelers, help our uh, recreational travelers to handle their, uh, their refunds or some of their changes. And even through the pandemic, actually, you actually see how we were able to help our customer better than our, many of our competitors. Right. So we'll get a lot of good high praises about, hey, well, thank you for doing that for us uh, so at, at the difficult times. So I think that is one of our uh, differentiators. Uh, that wouldn't be the only thing. Uh, the other part is obviously our uh, global platform and be able to kind of looking at different pieces all together and kind of doing adjustments as we need. So that way we can actually be not just to bump heads, you know, and, and just kind of go after the, the price war, which China, as you know, would love to do. Um, and Frankly, you look at some of our competitors, some of them are not doing too well, right? Either they, they do, they're no longer existing or they're changing process again. So we're seeing some of that as well. So we are, uh, I would say we are aware of the competition that's happening. We're aware that we need to be on the top of our game, but at the same time, we're confident that we can actually weather the storm like we have. Let's also time. talk about your global business plans, uh, Schubert. Now, uh, Trip.com was listed on NASDAQ in 2003, and today it comprises uh, different uh, businesses like Skyscanner, uh, C-Trip, uh, Tunar, and um, also, uh, yeah, Trip.com, obviously. So you have like four different uh, entities uh, under one roof. Tell me a little bit about your future acquisition plans once this uh, storm is weathered. Uh, sure. Uh, of course, I can't tell you the exact detail about what, what we are. But as you can see, that we have done a very good global investment uh, in the past few years, uh, namely Skyscanner. 
we're looking at make my trip and then we did some investment with make my trip in india so we have strategically put ourselves into some of the major global uh, platforms and regions to have a presence in that uh, we also did an investment earlier this year to to get more acquisition in the european area so all in all, I think we, our goal is to be able to cover the world. Uh, our vision uh, based, uh, being laid out by our chairman, um, James uh, Liang, is to be able to be the number one player in five to 10 years right, in, in the world. Uh, obviously, there's still many very prominent competitors that we have, which we respect a lot, um, but we are really trying to do our best to say, hey, we're no longer just a Asia-only focused company. We are also now world focused. We have uh, great teams in Europe now. We, we are looking into a different landscape, even in the bigger Asia, uh, looking at Middle East, for example, maybe even looking at America, South America. There are many opportunities, as we know. And to, to be very open, uh, throughout this whole, whole process, more opportunities will come up, uh, if you know what I mean, meaning that some companies, which are great companies, are struggling to some degree. So we are in talks with them to see how we can partner in, in certain cases, even invest. So that's on our radar, uh, on, on our conversation. We've been talking to many uh, potential candidates uh, in the past couple of months. So we're looking forward to more investment opportunity as we go. And Schubert, of course, uh, Chip.com started in China, and uh, I would imagine today the primary source of uh, customers uh, come from Chinese. And so in terms of, uh, just on a macro level, in terms of the per capita expenditure on tourism uh, by a Chinese versus uh, by a uh, person from an OECD country, how do we stack up? Uh, I think we did do really well. Uh, I don't have the exact exact number of the 2019 number, but China has been the number one growth country for the last, say, 10 plus years. So uh, per capita spend, we are in the you know first quadrant of the top, I would say close to top five. And don't quote me on that because it depends on how you define a country. But we're really in the top tiers now, right? The amount of money people spend, the, the, the length of stay, that people actually go is actually increasing over time. So you know how the Chinese population tend to go to nearby countries first, and then they go there multiple times, and they get bored and start you know, traveling to a bigger world. And as they go further, their stay goes longer, which makes sense, right? If I have to fly, say, 16 hours to Amsterdam or what have you, then I would like to stay there and tour around multiple countries in that area. So the, the span with the income increase and also the, the, the interest of going long haul travel uh, has really put China into the first quadrant as, as we speak. So we, we see that continuing. Uh, some people are predicting that, yeah, travel will be very different going forward, people will scale down. We don't necessarily see that. I mean, we have seen SARS, we have seen many other challenges in the past where eventually we recover. This, this time just turns to be longer than before. Uh, I think SARS, it took about four months and over time it disappeared. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, COVID is here to stay for a little while longer. Uh, we won't have a vaccine probably until Q1 of next year. So, um, but after that, uh, after the vaccine is vastly available to, you know, many other people around the world, then we will see people go back to their normal pace of travel. So, and how so do you see the lifestyle and the travel consumer behavior change? I mean, previously we've seen, you know, the mass Chinese uh, tour groups coming to Europe and other places. Then there is, um, you know, a shift towards more individual travelers and backpackers going to Iceland and other destinations. So how do you see this change? Yeah, I think you, you, you hit it exactly that FIT, uh, you know, free independent travelers are, are, are the trend going forward. And we have seen that already in the last couple of years. For example, the, the latest data for COVID is people are driving a lot, right? The rental car business, 
uh, the, 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 uh, the, the short haul travel is actually speaking, uh, picking up a lot faster than the long haul travel. So we are going to see uh, some of those kind of take off. Shorter duration as well, meaning that currently after because of COVID, people are planning only a couple of days ahead of their travel date rather than, yo, I'm planning for my summer, right? A month or two before. So that is actually changing. We're also changing the method of travel is changing. So that will actually be the sort of near future as we see it. You need much more flexible booking and cancellation uh, policies. Yeah, if you have uh, listened to our uh, launch just a couple of days ago, right? Flexi booking is the exact program that we launched. We're gonna have a lot of flexible adjustments you can make after you make the booking. And we also exactly. uh, screen yesterday, we have many of those saying, hey, yeah, you can just save by the initial coupon and then over time you can actually do the booking when you're ready. So we're seeing that flexibility happening with hotels. We're also seeing that happening with airlines. Uh, you've probably seen a couple of them already, uh, not to name their names. But, uh, some of them say, yeah, you can just buy with this price and you can freely travel for the rest of the year. So those are actually happening as we see it. And then uh, those are actually getting a lot of high prices. A lot of people are, I mean, I heard a number this morning on how many that one airline sold. It was like something like 100,000, which is amazing. So, so all in all, I think there, there are various different ways where the businesses, enterprises are changing how they do business. For example, airlines or hotels and how are they putting their offers together. So then it's really getting customers to saying, yeah, that's very attractive. It's relatively safe. So let me just give it a try. So right. that, that's what we're seeing in terms of trend change. So talking about uh, the new innovative things that you have just launched the super, uh, you just mentioned last night, you launched uh, uh, trip.com live. Tell us about that. Sure, absolutely. So trip.com live started when we were doing it in China uh, just a couple of months ago. Um, and then initially it was, oh, let's just give it a try because that's like a trend in China, like live broadcast is, is, is the thing. So uh, our chairman, uh, James Leung, did it the first time, and then he said, wow, this is actually quite impressive, right? We get a lot of good uh, awareness from people. We get a lot of traffic. We actually get very good transaction numbers. So I was like, okay, this is something that we need to do more longer term, right? Sure enough, you read it on the news, right? He's like changing different locations, doing different outfits, and he's having a ball with it. And we're actually having a lot of uh, partners come in to say, yeah, this is great. This is actually really trying to re revitalize the industry, really helping in particular region to get more um, you know, visibility. So we're seeing more and more of that happening. So what we're doing then is taking this China experiment and putting that into the world. So as we mentioned earlier, uh, we are starting to do that in Hong Kong. That happened you know, 24 hours ago, and that was actually very, very well received. We actually see numbers doubling our expectation, which is great. And then next, we're gonna to go to Korea, and then we have plans for uh, Thailand, for Japan, and for Singapore. So, so yeah, I think this is a way to really help the industry to jumpstart, uh, and somebody has to do it. I think we are in position to really help everybody to get back to that mood, get into that rhythm. Uh, and um, yeah, I think we are also obligated to do some of that because I think the, the whole industry needs the help and then users are ready to go as well. So let's just put them together uh, in, a, in a very lively, entertaining way. And, and that's how, how we see the live stream will, will, will help us. Oh, well, it certainly takes a rock star to do it. And uh, James does a fantastic job. Super, oh, yeah. I know uh, many, uh, now talking about a couple of decades ago, you know, you started with, uh, originally, you know, you book hot uh, hotels on sea trip and then you added uh, airlines and then you started adding uh, corporate travels, uh, tour packages, et cetera, et cetera. And now you've got 40, 50, uh, I don't know how many products line uh, you have now at trip.com, but what do you add next? Uh, great question. So we tend to have 60 <laughs> to, to answer your question. And uh, I think we're, we are, what we're looking at is not necessarily adding, but refining. I think that's the direction we're seeing, right? As, as we get into more product lines, we're actually seeing, okay, some of them have really high potential, uh, yet they have not really been fully explore, you know, explored, 
meaning the products are not there yet. And we actually can make it more efficient and users love the product more. For example, as you see on the ticketing side, right? The trend for the last couple of years has gone from uh, physical ticket to online ticket to ticketless gates and now touchless gates. See, you see how that changed? So what we're seeing is, you know, many of the industry will go through the same thing. With COVID, with people worry about interacting, social distancing, we are going to see, hey, maybe, you know, touchless check-ins, more safer way to go to air, uh, airline, uh, airports and so on. So yeah, I, I think we're really refining each of the industry and try, try to make the industry uh, to the fullest of potentials. And that's how we are actually looking at rather than just simply adding more. And, and as we know, longer stays, yeah, for hotel is like accommodations, longer stays, uh, people are actually feeling safer if I'm in a clean place and then I don't have to kind of travel a lot. So uh, we're seeing some of the trend changes and we're making our existing product more agile and be able to meet their needs. Let's also talk about the future of travel. We've just had the SpaceX mission, uh, more space exploration and so on. Um, what about uh, you know, trip.com and your plans to go into space? Do you have any space mission on the, your offerings on your website already or some tour package we can already pre-book in advance? That's such a fun question. So thanks for asking that. Sky is um, the limit, right? Exactly. Uh, we, we, to be very, very frank and honest, I mean, it's, it's great to see SpaceX able to launch it a couple, you know, a couple of weeks ago. I think it's June 13th when they did it. And they, they did a fantastic job, right? But make that commercialized and be able to have people able to travel. I think it was still a few years away. Uh, and that said, I think that the industry are also looking at other changes, right? Uh, the automated driving. A uh, high-speed rail around the world, right? So really trying to compress the travel time is what we're seeing that will happen in the near future. Uh, not to discredit the, the space travel idea. I, I think it's fantastic. I, I would love to get on there if I qualify. <laughs> it's not so much about money, it's about fitness, right? You have to be able to endure the multi-G environment and, and be able to do that. So uh, and to make it more, you know, uh, exposable to a higher population, it has to be something that's more conventional, something has to be easily accessible. So we're actually seeing that the high-speed travel uh, area is actually the one that's really taking off. You see that in Japan, they're upgrading their speed. China is testing that to 600, 600 kilometers an hour. We're seeing high-speed rail being uh, put into Thailand, to Indonesia, by various con uh, countries' investment. So those are the things that we're actually seeing. And likewise, high-speed jets are also in another area. Sure, some of them will be impacted by COVID and will be delayed for a couple of years. And that, that's uh, not unrealistic. But, um, but yeah, I think there will be more fun ways to travel, sometimes you know, less people, and then you will be you know, accompanied by robots uh, in many cases. So the, the AI way of travel will likely will be the future. We're seeing that already happening in hotels. We're seeing that in automated travel agencies, uh, agents meaning they are just in your device or in an app where it's location driven, then you can simply just kind of go there and then they tell you, oh, you're now standing in a, in a spot that so-and-so been here before, right? And back in 1917, this is what happened here. So we're seeing that happening in terms of the new new future and technology in travel. And Schubert, uh, I know uh, Trip.com at one point in time uh, sold a $220,000 luxury packages to travel around the world. I love around the world travels. Uh, you sold it in what, 15 seconds? Oh, How yeah. did you do that? I think uh, partly it's because of our awesome user base, our customer base, right? Meaning that Trip and, and, and C Trip has a lot of great customers that are loyal to us. And also they are quite uh, financially established. So when they heard the idea, which is something rare and this actually really get people's attention, they're ready to come, come on board. Unlike the space travel where you really have to be 
physically able to do it. Uh, travel around the world in you know 70, 80 days is actually quite doable and very enjoyable to that extent. Right? So I think that that's why we have. So it's very important that we have great customer support where your brand is being trusted. And with that, you gain loyalty. And with that loyalty, and users will actually really look at your product offerings and then pay attention to what's, what's valuable. So I think- The customer is still king and queen, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And Schubert, uh, just to follow up on what you just talked about, you know, uh, obviously Trip.com uh, services a lot of the luxury uh, travelers uh, in China. But, uh, what we have seen, uh, you know, which is quite impressive is the Pinduoduo model, which serves, you know, we thought at one point in time, this whole e-commerce space is entirely taken by Alibaba and the JD.com. And then all of a sudden, Pinduoduo came onto the horizon and started serving third, fourth, fifth tier city uh, customers. So when you uh, have such a massive presence in the elite traveling space, how do you go deeper to serve the lower tier cities in China? Sure, that's a great question. I think that's something that we, we are also exploring and trying to do a better job at. Uh, one of the things you probably know that we actually have physical stores and right? we actually have a lot of these stores that will actually serve them. Because what you find is this particular population don't necessarily have to think that online is safe yet. Some of them are if you're doing very low dollar amount purchasing. So if you're buying on Pinduoduo, you're buying something for $10. Yeah, if I make a mistake, so what? But travel is different. Right? Travel, the dollar amount is going to be higher. Uh, the uncertainties are slightly higher. So to build that confidence, we need to provide a service that we need. So I think before the, the pandemic, we actually have great uh, growth in the physical store area in the lower level cities, if you want to use that term. So in, in that case, then we are getting more traction combined with our apps and our uh, global presence with multiple brands that we have. I think that help us to cover the different areas. We also have certain uh, sub apps, we want to call it, or uh, smaller apps that really serve those particular areas. So in, in the train space, we have a number of different apps that actually help, help students to travel, for example. So we are targeting them in various ways. One is through you know, stores, one is through different apps, and also through our, uh, the mini program also uh, in, in, in our uh, WeChat platform. So yeah, we're trying to touch them in different ways and hopefully then we, we can reach out to them uh, just like some of our big competitors are doing. And I, I should say, though, I am uh, the lucky generation that I grew up with uh, companies uh, the likes of uh, Trip.com. I think the very first travel that I ever booked uh, was actually online. And I'm not sure if uh, anybody in the world today is still calling, uh, you know, airlines to book a ticket rather than just going on to Trip.com or Expedia and your competitors. And so this industry has been, in a way, a conventional industry already. It's been in existence for two decades. The business model is mature, uh, market is saturated. Where do you see the next disruption force for the entire industry? Where would the threat for you come from? Yeah, uh, I, that's, a, that's a fantastic question. I, I think it's also something that we, we think about a lot. Uh, first of all, if I can uh, use some numbers to back this up, even though we think the online penetration is high, it's not as high as we think it is. Okay, even in China, uh, many of the things are still f happening at the physical level uh, offline. So there's definitely room for offline to online that continue will get higher attraction and higher conversion. And if you look at globally, that's even more so than, than, than China. Many, many other things are still happening offline. Even they are happening, they may be happening on PC. So I think initially is how can this uh, environment change that? I think it's changing it, meaning that people are getting more trained to use their devices and use their computers and more so than before. And since the penetration rate is really not as high as we think, we're seeing more people jumping online and be able to do that. Um, not to use a, any particular name, we, we are seeing some, some of the partners that have a lot of physical stores struggling. 
just because they, they invest a lot and they don't put enough emphasis onto the digital space and they, they are having a hard time. So at, by the end of this whole uh, ordeal, we will probably see a good 20, 30%, maybe more of our uh, partners or industry participants probably mm -hmm. go back. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will change the, the, the mix of users. So in terms of what are the potential, uh, the reshuffling of the industry, uh, that's the first opportunity that we see. Uh, because of that reshuffling, then there will be new opportunity that will come in. And user behavior is the second change, meaning that what are they going to be looking for? Are they looking for just price or they're looking for safety and flexibility? And if they're changing their expectation and, and what they're looking for, then the product offering has to change. So we're not necessarily cha changing the way people travel, so to speak, or changing the, the, the particular dimensions like hotels or airlines, but more so on meeting their needs. Right. What are the exact things they need to make that a safe trip uh, that they wanted to go? And by providing that, I think then we'll gain more market share or more uh, awareness from our customers and be able to do a better job in serving them. Mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about the industry uh, with a 30 percent uh, going out of business potentially, that's a huge reshuffle. So uh, for the Chinese government's policy, I know there was a number of incentives uh, to post the uh, COVID-19 to help the uh, specific companies that are particularly hit. And I think uh, tourism is right in the center of that. So what is the specific uh, government policy that has been utilized uh, at trip.com and uh, um, the Chinese government also, the local government also launched uh, digital coupons on tourism. How effective is that? Yeah, so I think we are seeing some of that, right? I think at, at a uh, very high level, the, the central government is giving a lot of uh, directions on, hey, we need to re re revitalize the tourism industry. And then that translates to uh, regional policies and that affects the tourism boards at each of the regions. So we're actually getting uh, more and more support from these boards to say, hey, we really want to revitalize this particular space and how can we make that happen? Then we create campaigns or live streams and what have you to really help them to generate that momentum. So we are seeing them investing. We're seeing them investing at a sort of the region level. We're also seeing them investing into platforms like, you know, Trip and also with some of the uh, mom and pops uh, at, at the local level. So with the incentive coming in, uh, I think people are willing to give a little bit more discount or with the help of government, right? They really want to put more incentive out and that will actually drive some of the travel. And as you can see in China, I think people are, lives are getting more to normal, right? Less people are wearing masks now because they're not as worried uh, because of the contact tracing that we have you're very clear and you feel like that you're very safe right so from to that extent people are more eager to get out and in some of the weekends you can see boy uh, things are just getting back to the normal pre-covid uh, level um so yes i think with the government incentive coming in filtering down uh, into the lower level businesses we are seeing signs that things will go back to normal that said some of them still may not be able to survive uh, especially some of the group tour type uh, business model where it's really not something that people need at this moment. So mm -hmm. they will be impacted more so than some of the other. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. before we go, Schubert, um, once this global pandemic is over, right? What is your first destination that you want to travel to? Oh, for me? Um, yes. Actually, I have a, my delayed plan to go, go to um, Iceland. So my, my destination was to go to Iceland right around February time frame, and then you know what happened. So if I can physically go there again, which my, my plan is already there, I'd love to go there. But, but I think there are so many places around the world now is so everybody wants to go, right? We, we just can't, we're so eager to get out of the doors and really travel and breathe the fresh air instead of just you know, staying at home. So, and so, the yeah. world is such a beautiful place and so many yeah. destinations to visit and discover, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we have seen a lot of 
animals now coming back into nature and things have changed. So we're going to see a lot more beautiful things uh, when we get out. We thank you for your support of Hey China and for any audience who love uh, to follow Sherbert, follow us, please uh, subscribe, uh, give us a thumb up on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. Absolutely. And thank you for your time. I, you guys do a fantastic program and trying to bridge the gap between the countries and the nations. So thank you for, for all your effort and we should find a way to partner. <laughs>